What is fibromyalgia? Hi, I'm Melissa from melissavsfibromyalgia.com and founder of Yoga for the Chronic Life Virtual Yoga Studio. It is my jam to help you manage chronic symptoms and use accessible yoga to get the side benefits which help us with our chronic symptoms. We are asking the big questions at the moment. So today, what is fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia is a chronic pain-based illness of unknown origin and cure. So that means we don't know exactly what causes it and we don't have a cure yet. It affects approximately 3-6% to of the world's population and it affects far more women than men, but there are definitely men who suffer with it as well. It appears indiscriminatory in race, education level and socioeconomic demographics, meaning it can hit pretty much anyone. I've struggled with this illness for actually most of my life. I've put in a lot of work to my wellness journey. Uh, in 2017, I was the most well that I had been since I was 17 years old. In 2021, I am the most well I can ever remember being. And I have four children in lockdown and the youngest baby has not slept in his entire eight months for more than a couple of hours because he has reflux. So that's saying something. But this doesn't mean that I'm not affected 24-7. I have it as well managed as possible. But this gives you a sense of the pervasiveness of this illness. If someone with mild fibromyalgia is impacted all day every day from a mild to moderate um, scale, can you imagine what it's like when it's severe? When it's severe, it impacts everything all day. Uh, so it's a pretty hardcore illness to manage. So what are the symptoms of fibromyalgia? So on the University of Maryland Medical Center website, fibromyalgia is explained in this way. It is a chronic condition characterized by pain in the muscles, ligaments, and tendons, fatigue, and multiple tender points on the body. On the same page, they list the signs and symptoms. So we're talking widespread pain and stiffness, fatigue and trouble sleeping, uh, parenthia, which is tingling, Irritable bowel syndrome, skin sensitivity, heightened sensitivity to noises, bright lights, and smells. Depression, headaches, migraine, pain after exertion, memory lapses or difficulty concentrating, restless leg syndrome, dizziness, anxiety, and hemorrhoids. I don't even know how hemorrhoids got on that list. But anyway, not everybody will have all of those um, symptoms and there are a lot of other symptoms uh, that kind of come to the party as well because when your body is fighting something like lack of sleep and constant pain and constant fatigue, of course your other symptoms, uh, your other systems are affected. So the trouble is, like I've just said, is that fibromyalgia is unique to each person. So how it comes on, what symptoms are present, and what helps us. And that is the tricky thing. So what helps me might not necessarily help you. And that's what makes it really tricky to treat right now. There's also a lot of debate as to whether trigger points are present in fibromyalgia or part of a separate issue called myofascial pain syndrome. And a lot of those conditions above overlap with a lot of different conditions. So what causes fibromyalgia? They don't really know. It is an illness with a long history and many theories, and it's been called by different names over the years. Uh, for some, it's brought on by trauma, like an illness or prolonged stress or pregnancy. Um, and for others, it just kind of creeps up. And for some, it just starts, boom, you're sick. Uh, so they don't really know a lot about it, but they are doing a lot of research and a lot of clever people are researching it. So I have a lot of hope. Now, research has found alterations in neurotransmitter regulation, immune system function, sleep physiology, and hormone level control. A lot of research suggests that fibromyalgia is the result of central nervous system dysfunction, especially an overactive nervous system, which stresses and exhausts the brain. Now, I 100% resonate with this. My nervous system is like the top level thing uh, that kind of manages it all. Uh, and so I've noticed that they really work together, the symptoms and the overall noise of the nervous system. So those things are like sensitivity to noise and lights and sounds. That's about being oversensitized and the central nervous system being too on. Again, anxiety, that's the nervous system just being 
in fight and flight mode too much and that's why I love yoga and why I think yoga has helped me quite a lot uh, through doing yoga nidra for many years I have managed to bring down my nervous system and really help um, keep it down and when I can't sleep I do yoga nidra uh, when I'm feeling like overwhelmed I just go to bed put on my eye mask and do my yoga nidra and it really makes a big difference so I do believe that that central nervous system is a really important part of it but there is a lot of research going on and we will find answers I believe there are answers coming now is fibromyalgia an autoimmune disease there's a lot of conflicting information around this some suggest there is um, and there is a lot more reading you can do about it the main argument appears to be around whether or not it causes inflammation New research is linking fibromyalgia to neuroinflammation or inflammation of the brain. Uh, and this is what Lotus naltrexone helps with um, and why a subset of people, including myself, have had amazing results. Uh, but the typical um, understanding of autoimmune disease is that it's your own immune system attacking your own body, uh, which I think is why there's been a bit of a hold up in figuring that out. Uh, so watch this space basically is the answer to that one. Now we are going to go into diagnosis and treatments next time. Uh, but long story short, it takes a very long time to get diagnosed. On average, you see multiple doctors fight multiple years. I'm hoping that this is going to be a thing of the past. I myself spent several years with with doctors ignoring my symptoms, implying I was making it up. It was a whole thing. I hope that those kind of doctors are getting out of the road now and the doctors who get it and bother to research further about it are the ones who are staying around. I hope this has helped. I hope this has answered some questions. Let me know if you have more questions below and we will pick up this series next time.